guys. I'm super excited for this episode. We're going to be diving into what's going on in the macro, what's going on with this banking crisis. We're going to talk a little bit about Bitcoin ATMs, um, the Arbitrum airdrop, and more. So just stay till the end of this video. Um, we're going to be diving into a lot of great criteria. Um, again, guys, whether you're a seasoned crypto enthusiast or you're just starting out or you know, you're helping your grandma get involved and dip her toes in the world of digital currencies, guys, our podcast is for everyone, whether you're new, whether you're intermediate, whether you're expert, you know, we try to bring as much information as we can um, in, in engaging content to keep you up to date in this rapid evolving space. This is super innovative, um, so sit back, relax, enjoy your cup of coffee. I got my coconut water here um, and let's dive right into it. So as you can see, we have a major resistance here, uh, major resistance here right about here. Um, and if we can break through this $1.2 trillion market cap, guys, what I like to look at is I like I like to get the low from the 2018 in this, you were more um, focused. Remember this part when uh, Bitcoin dropped to like 3K? And yeah. then it pumped like 352%. And that mm -hmm. was like during a bear market. So we're going to have rallies during this bear market. Um, who knows? We could be at the start of a bull market. We, we don't we don't know the future. All we can do is position ourselves. So what I like to do is just take the low from here. And obviously, every bull market, you know, the prices are suppressed. The market's growing bigger. Um, the market's growing. And... You're not going to see as much upside as for the early pioneers that were in like 2014 and 17. Um, but if if I take even half of that, like 370, if 380, like if I do like half of that and then I take it from the bottom here, we're sitting at about like, we're still going to, I think we, we're going to make another leg up and I don't know this, but like it, going into 2024, we can have some sell pressure. People are taking profits. You have tax, tax season coming up and that's, Typically what happens is we bottom out in December. We bottomed out in December. It's just crazy how um, on point these cycles are working. It's like clockwork. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't want to be underexposed, especially when we're starting to show upward momentum. Um, like, like I said, if we break through this $1.2 trillion market cap, that's huge, you know, for crypto. Anything 30K is big. 30K is big for Bitcoin too, because that's kind of like when we had that uh, bull market collapse of 50%. And I believe it was May of 21 when it went from that first all time high uh, at 60,000, it went down to 30,000. And then uh, we went back up and hit that 69 and then came back down and 30,000 was like that, that kind of area you probably can see it in the charts, but 30,000 is a big, is a big uh, resistance that mm. uh, we'd like to turn into support that would really be a confirmation that we're back right. on. Right. What I like to look at is just simple technical analysis. Look at this. This is the offloading zone. If we do the same thing here, offloading zone, all right? So what I'm thinking is this right here, what we're seeing right now is part of this bear market rally. Um, so I'm not saying we can't, I don't think we're gonna make new lows. Like if you think thinking Bitcoin's gonna hit 15K, like. After all the contagion, I I, I don't think that's, I, I'm not going to say it's not possible, but it's not likely. Um, Yeah, so that's something. There's a couple of perma bears on, on Twitter that are still sticking by it. Yeah. I, I follow a couple just because it's good to always get both sides of the coin. Like, you know, we're we're both, you know, perma, perma bulls. It's good to see the perma bear perspectives too. Um, and some of them with their tech, the, the technical analysis that they're following still believe that we're going to make a new low, which I, I mean, I, I don't think so. I don't think so either, but I got to say one thing, uh, your setup's looking nice over there. Did you switch something around? Yeah, I got a, I got a light. My, my daughter's got this light thing that I have, uh, uh -huh. like shining on me right now. It, yeah. And uh, also it looks like you'll be able to, cause I know we post these reels and your face is a little cut out. Yeah. It yeah. looks like you're lower down now. Yeah. I have it up. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm good. Trying to fix it up a little bit here. <laughs> Did you add an earth behind you too? Uh, it was always there. I just couldn't see it. My head was always blocking it. Oh, that looks nice. Yeah, I got. Uh, I should probably work on my setup. I like BitBoy setup. BitBoy's got a yeah. cool little setup. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, Don, do you want to take it from here? Do you want to talk a little bit about the banking crisis? Um, anything you want me to pull up and talk about? 
Uh, uh, well, we can start with the uh, the brand new uh, or the newest, which is uh, the UBS uh, buyout of Credit Suisse. Um, so you got Credit Suisse, who was on the brink of failure in uh, Switzerland uh, end of last week, kind of mimicking what happened with uh, Silicon Valley Bank here in the United States the week prior. Uh, they were teetering. Uh, UBS, who actually is one of their rivals, uh, came in and uh, scooped them. Uh, basically, uh, it's kind of crazy because all they, they they did this merger deal acquisition and they did it without any of the shareholders getting to vote on it. They just came in. They 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 deemed it dire enough where UBS was just going to come in and it wasn't it's not considered a bailout because the shareholders are not being made whole. They're basically being zeroed out, but they're uh, putting liquidity into Credit Suisse so they can not falter. Um, and it's crazy because even with all of this. Uh, right before we jumped on the podcast, I, I was on CNBC and Credit Suisse's stock today was down 50 percent today. Um, and their stock is, has taken an absolute beating since all this has happened. Didn't they and offer I, like 24 cents a share or something? Crazy it was some, something something like that. And, and UBS initially, too, was also down uh, even with this. But I think they've since recovered. Uh, oh, my. The, the, the U.S. Is that is that the Credit Suisse stock? Oh, wow. This is not good. Oh yeah, of course. But uh, what's crazy? What's crazy is uh, the the banking stocks here in the U.S. with this deal, they're all up today. Uh, first Republic, if you I, I posted on Facebook uh, today, the first Republic uh, year to date stock, it's worse than Bitcoin's chart. They're down wait, like eighty five percent. Wait, say it again. <laughs> first Republic Bank, the one that's been what's like the, next in line. What's the tucker, ticker? Uh, I'm not sure the ticker. I just first, googled First Republic Bank stock. Right, FRC. Yeah. They, oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and they say give, they say Bitcoin's they, risky. They give Bitcoin a lot of shit. And Bitcoin, even this, even as bad as things got, this bull, this uh, bear market with FTX, with Celsius, we still didn't hit 85 percent down. And this thing, this thing went off a cliff. And that's that's a bank, bro. That's supposed to be like you got the Federal Reserve behind you. They're just giving out free money, like you know. Candy. That's crazy. Yeah, and and uh, they're they're uh, you know they're they're trying to. I also saw that Signature Bank's getting bought up too. I, I didn't. I, I caught that in passing. I'm not sure who's buying it, but somebody's buying their assets. So these banks are getting are getting scooped for pennies on the not, dollar. Yeah, I would not be buying um, any bank stocks. I wouldn't touch it. Yeah. So over the weekend, also the big news was that the Biden administration had reached out to Warren Buffett. And was trying to talk to Warren Buffett about what the next steps could be in, in saving the banking industry. For those that aren't aren't hip to it in the in the financial crisis, uh, they turned to Warren Buffett, and he came in and scooped up a billion dollars of Bank of America stock. That's so crazy. he has he has a billion dollars of Bank of America stock. So whatever Bank of America stock is trading at, times that by a billion, and that's what Warren Buffett has just you, in Bank of America. Could you imagine stock. being a billionaire? And getting a call from the White House during a financial crisis, you're like trying to hide. <laughs> you know, that's yeah, crazy. I mean, it's uh, it's cra it's crazy that you know, l like we were saying a little bit last week, um, like people that don't really even talk or think money or think finance or really anything like that, you know, we're 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 uh, you know, putting statuses up and talking about you know, making jokes about like, you know, uh, I saw somebody put up uh. I'm a genius because I, I I'm broke. So I have no money to lose in the banks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. kind of funny. Like people are saying it's a, it's a good time to be broke because you can't lose money in the banks. And yeah. it's like, it's sad that those are like, you know, people are, are, are saying that, but I mean, it's crazy because these, the, the what we've been saying to, to get back serious again, you know, the whole thing of Bitcoin, which is what was the catalyst for crypto started on the principle that, you know, after the financial crisis, we saw that some banks were just too big to fail. And we knew that they should have failed. And we know that fractional reserve banking is built on this, you know, Ponzi scheme system where, you know, the, the, you just keep providing money and printing money. And, and, and these banks are, are, are their balance sheets are, are, are not what you think that mm -hmm. they are. And the reason, the whole reason for the FDIC is so people feel comfortable putting their money in this system that we know is fraudulent. So all of that is 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 what we've known as Bitcoiners all along. And to see this playing out, you know, the financial crisis kind of 
you know, in 2008, it was the too big to fail was the was the mantra and they came in and stopped it from collapsing. And here we are 15 years later and we're seeing, you know, actual banks going down like we saw Washington Mutual in 2008. And we've just seen uh, what are we at? Three collapses so far, three or four collapses so far with with, uh, you know, First Republic teetering and, you know, the, the Fed. Uh, uh, talking to somebody like Warren Buffett about, you know, what do we do? Is he interested in possibly providing liquidity to the system? And it's, it's, it's crazy to see this all play out in real time, but um, we, us Bitcoiners, like, I think people on the outside are like, Oh, you're just all about the money. It's like, Oh, you want to turn, you know, your money into uh, uh, you want to be rich because of Bitcoin. It's like, you know, and I've said this, I haven't sold anything since 2018. And, I'm, I don't have my money in Bitcoin to sell it. Like I'm not selling my Bitcoin for, for uh, fiat. Like that's, that's never the plan. You know, I, I'm holding Bitcoin because I believe it's the best asset that we have in mankind. So it's not just about the money. It's about not losing everything. You know what I mean? Uh, of being able to sustain in a system that, you know, we see potentially collapsing. So that's, you know, it's more than just, you know, a get rich, you know, quick type, scheme or or you know all about money and and even people say about the tech it's like no man like putting your money just in the banks or in in the traditional system like you're you're slowly going to zero and and we've seen it accelerate the last two weeks and obviously the fed and the government are going to do everything they possibly can to keep this fraudulent scheme going as long as they possibly can make it go um so i mean do i think that the whole system is going to collapse now no i don't Will it eventually collapse? Yes. I mean, eventually it's just going to be, it's going to be too much and it's going to be just, you know, they're not going to be able to do all these things that they've been doing. And, and hopefully more people will wake up and and exit that system. And uh, it's just, a, it's inevitable, man. I've been saying this for years and it was, it was crazy when, you know, they were pumping all the liquidity into the system through the fed and printing money and the stock market was up three, four, five, six hundred percent. And, and to say that back then, people are like, dude, you're nuts. Like you, you love Bitcoin. So you're saying it just because you want Bitcoin to do all this stuff. It's like, no, man, like I own Bitcoin because I believe this is what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like this is what this is the path that we're going down. And and I was saying this in 2012 and 2013 and 2014, even before I got into Bitcoin, I was saying this. And in, in Bitcoin, I was saying this. And the whole reason why it clicked for me with Bitcoin was because I saw what was going to happen with the system. And I saw bitcoin as that like life raft you know what i mean like it's crazy it's just it's so like next level to really think because we always look at like what's the price of bitcoin and we price bitcoin in united states dollars but we know that united states dollars are going to fail like we know this it's inevitable it's not if it's like when like we're we're basically just waiting to see like when it actually is going to fail and then what's going to come from that dust of that dollar like you know like it's crazy man it's been this has been a crazy like last like two to three years just overall Mm -hmm. you know seeing what happened in the pandemic how they just printed money Mm -hmm. like at will and and knowing like knowing how i know finance and knowing that that like that's how you create inflation and then seeing the people that are tasked to know this stuff that that's their job they they are in charge of our financial systems mm-hmm. and they're like no it's great like we're not infl- transitory like inflation is not going to happen like we're good it's all good keep printing we can print 40 percent mm-hmm. of all the money we ever created in mankind it's going to be fine it's like no man i have like, a really I'm good a point. nobody and i know that you know what i mean like what are you talking a, about yo don you and i both know a lot of people that dislike bitcoin right 100%. they hate it and yep. they they view it as like a stock. They view it as a chart. They view it as like the Nasdaq. They view it as the spy. They view it as a price chart in a in your brokerage account, whether it's Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade, whatever. But they haven't they haven't took it into self custody. They haven't traveled around the world with it. You know what I mean? It's more than just a chart and a price. It's self sovereignty, and that's the biggest thing. Like people people who do this people who dislike it view it as a. a like a Shopify, like, oh, Shopify is trading at $43. Like you can't put Shopify in self-custody and bring it around the world with you. That has to, Shopify has to sit in your broker account. You know what I mean? You can't, unless you sell it to US dollars and then put it in your bank account and then put it into another broker account. You can't transfer value. Like you can't transfer Shopify or like Apple stock value like that. You know what I mean? Like, for example, look at this. 
I got this as a birthday present and it's, I'm going to cover out the name, but it's basically HSBC shares. Um, and obviously that's not good. It's a bank stock, <laughs> but for someone to transfer me these shares, look at all the paperwork you have, you know what I mean? And I still have yet to like put it, it's been a year and I've still yet to put this in my account because it's like, what is this? And then I have to go to the bank and like do all this like signatures and all this writing. And I don't even know. How, I honestly, I don't even know how to do it. Like I have to like call my aunt who gave me it to figure out how can I get these shares in my bank account or in my broker? I don't know. You can't transfer value with Bitcoin. You can transfer value peer to peer immediately. It might take two seconds and it'll be two cents. Like it's, it's crazy. Uh, and I think that's where people are going wrong is they're looking at uh, Bitcoin as a price chart, like the NASDAQ or the SPY, and they should be looking at it as um, a digital gold, you know, something that you can bring around the world with you and it's portable and you can transfer that value in a borderless environment without any intermediaries. And that's, that's huge. You know, I like that you brought that up and you, and you, you while you were talking, like my brain was kind of working and I didn't plan on going this direction, but I, but I think this is relevant to what you were just saying. Um, I remember in 2015, the first time that CNBC even mentioned Bitcoin and how big of a deal it was to like the few of us that were on Twitter talking about Bitcoin and uh, Brian Kelly uh, was always on fast money and always on CNBC at the time. And he was really early into investing in Bitcoin. And he was literally like the only guy that ever talk about it. They give him like two or three minutes. He'd talk about it and they would move on. The 2017 bull run, uh, they would have Papliano on a lot, Anthony Papliano. He would come on and his investment firm was was heavily into uh, Bitcoin. And he would come in and talk about Bitcoin. And then they started putting the ticker on CNBC, right? So like the, the, uh, the, the what, what it looked uh, per, the perception was is that CNBC was like, oh, they get it. Like they understand Bitcoin. They got it up there. It's an investment. And and what we've kind of come to know as Bitcoiners and now that they, you know, they still have it as a ticker, they still talk, but they don't get it. Like CNBC, they look at it the same way that like you're talking about it, what you just said. Like they think it's like a share. Like they mm -hmm. think it's like an investment. And it's like Bitcoin's none of those things. Right. Like it started out as that for many of us, but it's not that anymore. Like I don't put money in Bitcoin to like invest because my investments are I'm putting money at X and I'm going to sell at Y. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. the goal is to, you know, put a dollar in and take out two, put a dollar yeah. in, take out three. Like that's an investment. Right. Bitcoin is not that Bitcoin is everything is here. And then we have Bitcoin over here for when all of this collapses. That's what Bitcoin is. And CNBC, either by design or they just don't get it, um, they, they don't talk about it like that. And, and, and I'm starting to think that that's, that's by design. I mean, because they're, they're, they're heavily incentivized by this old system that of, of traditional finance. And it's like for a long time, like guys like Jim Cramer, like these guys, I, I, like, I love finance. Like this is my hobby. This, like I have a job, but like finance is what I do in my free time. That's why I got into Bitcoin. That's why we do this podcast. This is my passion. So a lot of these people on CNBC and these Bloomberg, like I look up to them because it's like, oh, I wish I had all that knowledge. I wish like I was in that position. And it's like, now I take a step back and I'm like, they're all a part of this whole fraudulent system that's eventually going to collapse. Mm -hmm. And either they're willing participants or they're just more ignorant than I ever gave them really credit for. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, you look to these places that, and even talking about this banking crisis and the way that they're talking about it, it's like on Friday, two Fridays ago, it was like doom and gloom. And like last week it was like, oh, Credit Suisse is about to collapse. And then I turn it on today and it's like, you would think that everything was great. Like they got green all over the screen. Everybody's happy. The whole mood has changed. I'm like, dude, what's changed? <laughs> like, nothing's Nothing. changed. It's worse. If anything, <laughs> shit is worse. Like, what are we happy about? Like, and it's like the perception for like the everyday layman that, that really doesn't understand. Like, that's who we talk to in this podcast. The person that really doesn't like completely get it where we're looking for that moment where it clicks, like that aha moment, like that we got that we're like, we don't look at Bitcoin as like an investment. It's like, it's Bitcoin. And then there's everything else. Like our investments, yeah. like for me, mm -hmm. I don't speak for you. Cause I know you're, you, you love ETH a little bit more than I love ETH, but like ETH on down for me is like, how do I make some money right. where yeah. I can an investment. put some of that right. more into Bitcoin? That's, I agree. 
And now let me add to that point. Okay. Go Everything ahead. besides Bitcoin and Ethereum, and we'll, we'll just stick with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not an investment because an investment is where you sell. <laughs> We're not selling. We're actually going to be taking profits of our altcoins into Bitcoin because Bitcoin is going to be the new pair, the new trading pair. Everything's going to be, in, um, it's not happened yet, but eventually things, assets are going to be priced in Bitcoin. Instead of having USD as a trading pair, like right now it's Bitcoin USD, it'll be Solana BTC. You know what I mean? It'll be that, th those will be the trading pairs because things will be priced in BTC, not the USD, you know? So that's something to keep yeah. in mind. Yeah, for sure. And, and that's, and that's where we speculate that Bitcoin will eventually decouple from the Federal Reserve printing pressers, you know, printing presses, you know? So, that's that's exciting, and I hope we see that in our lifetime. You think we'll see that in our lifetime? Bitcoin being the global reserve currency, maybe in yours. I don't know. Like, we're, we're, there's like a twenty year difference between me and you. I don't know. It's it's tough. In in the next twenty years, could I see it happening? Yeah, I mean, I think hyperinflation. I think, in next, I think hyperinflate. I think it, yeah, keep going. I think in the next twenty years. The dollar, the United States dollar, as we see it today, won't exist the same way. Mm -hmm. That I think is a given. Mm -hmm. But I think there's so much might behind this traditional system. And there's so, I wouldn't say so many people, but there's a, a conglomerate of people that are so heavily incentivized by this system that they will hold on to it until the very last moment before they let it just completely collapse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and really quick, talking about what we were just talking about with, you know, how we were talking about Bitcoin and altcoins. The fundamental issue that I have with, with Bitcoin maximal, maximalism and maximalists, because I, 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 I tend to feel like I'm still a maximalist, even though I do have some other coins, is because what I don't understand is like, why wouldn't you want... The, here's it. most maximalists, most maximalists got in so early and accumulated so many coins that it's so easy for them to just say, everything else is a shit coin. Don't shit coin. Don't touch anything else. It's Bitcoin only. And that's it, right? But if you're trying to get people on the life raft, like they can't come in and just spend 28,000 and buy a coin, right? Or 2,800 and buy a 10th of a coin. They need other ways. And it's okay for me to go sell my best asset, right? My greatest asset time to another organization and get a paycheck. Right. That's the mm -hmm. ultimate shit coining, in my opinion. But we we OK that. Mm -hmm. But then I can't take a hundred bucks and put it in coin X. That's going to hundred X and turn that into something that I can maybe go buy 0.1 Bitcoin with. Whereas that hundred bucks doesn't even get me 0 0.01. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I, I have a problem with that, with with maximalists. And I get what they're saying. I understand that. I agree too. like 98 percent of the coins out there are shit coins. Right. But there are maybe a hundred of them that are are good enough to invest your capital in. And then maybe you find the one or two at the bottom that do make it up to hundred, this next bull run that you can make life changing money that you can also help in your real life now and also help stack into that Bitcoin pile that we're talking about. Like I have a problem with that. I really do. Mm -hmm. The ultimate shit coin is us dollar, not Dogecoin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know if Dogecoin and Shiba will survive. I feel like they're definitely monetary experiments as currencies. I don't know if they're going to be around in 10 years. You know, I, I think it's something you just look back in 10 years. 10 like, years, I don't know. But the next bull run, I think they jump again because they yeah. have such a high no, amount absolutely. of people in their community right now. Yeah. It's like XRP and Cardano. Like they're, yeah. they're, 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 you have these communities that are just so like strong that they won't die they'll they'll have their they'll have their day they'll you'll you'll be able to again i hate to say this because it sounds like i'm promoting it but and i'm not i'm definitely not promoting it but i feel like shiba inu and, and doge will will have they'll have big gains again you won't see the gains that you saw last cycle like you're not going to mm -hmm. get you're not going to turn twenty dollars into a ten thousand with shiba or or doge or whatever people were doing with but last, you're not going to see that but you might be able to turn a hundred bucks into a thousand or you might be able to turn you know, a hundred bucks into, you know, 2000. I don't know. I think that's going to happen again. Um, again, I'm not saying to buy those coins. I'm not endorsing those coins, but I think that that's, 
I think it's plausible that you see something like that happen again with, with coins like that. And then you'll see some other coin that we don't even know exists right now that'll do what they did last time. And it'll be a couple of people that make out on that. And then the rest will just come in and be the exit liquidity mm -hmm. like last time. Yeah. As we move forward, um, I want to dive a little bit into the Arbitrum ecosystem, which is a layer two scaling solution. I'm more of the ETH maxi than Don. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about this. Basically, Ethereum is a layer one. Um, Arbitrum is what's going to help Ethereum scale. So I've been utilizing, I've been using the Arbitrum layer for about 10 months now, where I've been bridging ETH over to the layer two, um, where the transactions are faster, cheaper. You know, there's a lot of DeFi built on Arbitrum. You could just go to DeFi Llama and you can see the ecosystem tokens. So early users are eligible for the Arbitrum airdrop. So an airdrop is where participants in these ecosystems or early users get um, an airdrop right to their crypto wallet, which I think is a great way to earn income during a bear market. So there's many more Arbitrum airdrops. Just subscribe to our newsletter. We're going to leave the link in the description where we're going to be doing airdrop guides so you can have access and you can not miss the next Arbitrum airdrop. Basically, it drops in two days, but you can check the eligibility um, now. So you just connect your wallet to Arbitrum.Foundation. And if you are using the Arbitrum chain, um, we didn't really talk too much about it in our podcast just because we just started this recently. Um, but yes, we're going to have a bunch of airdrop guides for you guys in the future. But two days, 21 hours and 57 minutes, we're going to have the Arbitrum airdrop um, drop. And I already, I already checked my eligibility. I'm getting a decent amount. I'm getting like 7250 um, and that's, that's not, in, so it's 7,250 shares and it's trading at $10 and 10 cents right now, the IOU. So this page tracks the price of Arbitrum IOU across changes. So I believe this is like OTC price. Um, doesn't mean it's going to drop in two days at $10. My, I think it's going to trade at like 50 cents to like three bucks. That's where I think it's going like <laughs> to consolidate at. Um, but we don't know, you know, ICP internet computer um, launched at 450, um, a coin. So I'm super excited, Don. I can't wait to like tell you about what, how this went. I, what, what is your plan? What is your plan with those coins? Are you going to liquidate a percentage, hold yeah. on to some, like yeah, turn yeah. some of the ETH or turn it yeah. to the alt? So I believe in Arbitrum long-term. So I don't want to sell everything, but I definitely want to take in Fair some enough. profits because that would suck if it goes to three bucks and then drops yeah. down to 20 cents. You yeah, know what I mean, and that, and with crypto, that can it's sometimes well within it, the realm. Yeah, it could be unrational sometimes in markets, so it could either go higher than I expect. It could it could go to ten bucks a coin, and I, or twenty five. You know, based on the market cap, what I like to do is take um, the our optimism um, market cap, which is another layer two, and kind of like justify like okay, if this is at you know the same market cap as Polygon or you know, uh, Arbitrum, it could, this could trade at least about $1.10. $10. Was that um, an airdrop? Optim optimism? Yeah, that, that, was an, airdrop that was an airdrop too. I missed it. But like I said, guys, we'll keep you in the loop for the next airdrop guys. Just subscribe to our newsletter below. And and I'll let you guys know where I'm going to be dropping a newsletter Thursday about um, the price of Arbitrum. So stay in tune with that. Um, just, I'm not gonna spend too much time here. I just thought it was very cool. Um, sure. This is my first real big Arb um, airdrop. I got one before for using a bridge. It's called across.to. It's just a bridge. Um, and it wasn't, it was like 40 bucks, but this, this is a minimal, like 1k, like this is a one minimal 1k airdrop 10k. If, if I'm lucky, we're going to see how it goes. This I'm super, dude, I'm stoked. Like the dopamine right now leading up to this is crazy. Like free I, monies is the best monies. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so we got about ten, nine more minutes here. Let's uh before we put our closing thoughts, I got a little uh thing with this guy. Let's talk about this. Okay, so this guy's I, I respect what he does, right? He's in the ATMs. My father's in the ATMs. He has my dad has over 270 ATMs around the country. I'm a loader, I load ATMs, which is kind of a contradiction. You know, I'm all about Bitcoin and we're talking about the US dollar failing, and here I am loading US dollars in ATMs, which I, like you said, we don't think the system's going to collapse, to, collapse tomorrow or next week, but it eventually will. But in the meantime, I want to be earning some passive income through ATMs and maybe um, I would get into Bitcoin ATMs. My father's into Bitcoin ATMs, but I came across this thread and it says, 
Last month, we installed this machine at a grocery store. We got nine transactions worth 16000 in total. Each transaction pays us 15%. So they're charging a 15% fee, which is $2,400 in profits. So he said, Bitcoin ATMs are like cash on steroids. So I just commented, you know, 15% fee, yikes. Um, and then he said, uh, he said, I'd, he said, I'd argue that LOL safer than Coinbase. Well, he said safer than using an online exchange amigo. He got four likes. I got three. So he's beating me there. Um, he's also has a bunch of his, uh, uh, students probably reading this. Um, and then I said, I'd argue that LOL safer than Coinbase. He said, yep, which he's wrong. It's not safer than Coinbase because if they're taking a 15% fee, that's robbery, right? Like I said, you and I both know like using using a Bitcoin ATM is a novelty item. Like it's like, oh, I just use a Bitcoin ATM. It's yeah. cool to say, right? Yeah. In reality, like during mass adoption, no one is going to pay 15% fee. That's like you going to the bank, pulling out a hundred and they took a hundred and fifty, they take $15 from you. It's just not sustainable. And he's also conflating Coinbase with FTX. Yes, FTX was a scam, right? But Coinbase mm -hmm. is one of the few under the bit license. It doesn't mm -hmm. use leverage. Plus, plus they have proof of reserves. And if you immediately withdraw from a sex, like I'm not keeping my Bitcoin on a, on a centralized exchange, I'm immediately withdrawing that and using that as an off ramp or an on ramp to my cold storage, right? Um, so. Yeah, if people if people were uh, using a, his BTMs and using Coinbase from 2012 until today, they would have lost so much buying power using those ATMs if they were using Coinbase, buying it and taking it right off the exchange. I mean, I get what he's saying. I mean, if people are going to pay it, God bless them, but it's just not going to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. And I personally, and I personally wouldn't, right? Like I wouldn't, I would do yeah, it. Like I said, it. I would do it just to say I did it. Is a novelty. Like, ooh, I pulled out, I bought twenty dollars worth of Bitcoin from an ATM, yeah, and I yeah. take a picture next to it, right? Sure. But I'm not going to yeah. sit there and be using a Bitcoin ATM as my main source of buying Bitcoin, right? Right. And I, and I'm, I know he agrees. I know he agrees with me. He might be a little biased because it's his business. And again, my father has two hundred seventy ATMs. He has Bitcoin ATMs, and I tell him, I don't think it's unless those fees come down, which I'm sure they, they they're going to have to with competition. Um, then maybe I'll use a Bitcoin ATM. But for now, I'll stick to Coinbase because like you said, you've been buying, using Coinbase since when? N never had any problems. Right, right. I've never had any problems. So I thought that was just a thought. I'm not coming at him. Seems like a genuine guy. He's doing really good. He's really successful with his business. Great, great for him. But you and I both know, you know, that's just not sustainable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the the market the market is allowing him to get that now, which is fine. God bless it. You know, I love capitalism. Get your money, but to think that that's going to be sustained when we get more adoption is just not realistic. Mm -hmm. And I'll tag him. That's in, all. You know, no that's really feelings. all. That's really all. It's yeah. not nothing wrong. Like he's not doing anything unethical. Like if he could charge twenty percent and get twenty, go for it. But like you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's just not gonna it's just not gonna be a thing when there's more of them. There aren't a lot. That's why he can get what he's getting, basically. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I thought this was a really good, productive podcast. It went by fast because I'm I, I don't pay for the Zoom, and you only get forty five minutes. That was a quick forty five minutes, wasn't it? Are we are are we out already? We got four minutes left, so we're gonna leave our clothing so clothe. Wow, I can't speak. Closing thoughts. Um, do you have anything last words for a beauty? Yeah. Uh, so the CT, the former CTO of Coinbase. We were just talking about Coinbase. Baraji, I think his name is. I'm probably mm -hmm. butchering it. He's on Twitter and he just made a bet. He put up $1 million USD against one Bitcoin. So at the time of the bet, Bitcoin was around 25,000. This was a couple of days ago. And that person puts up one Bitcoin in escrow against his $1 million. And he made a bet that in 90 days, so I believe it's 90 days from March 17th, Bitcoin has to be $1 million for him to win the bet. If he, if Bitcoin is not $1 million in 90 days, he loses the million dollars that he put up and the guy gets his one Bitcoin that he bought back, which is absolutely asinine to me. I, I can't believe that he would make that bet. There's got to be, there's got to be some sort of like promotional, like, I, I guess I heard he's doing a podcast and maybe he's doing some promo. That's a lot of money to be putting up for, but he's, He's been tweeting nonstop, if you can find him. 
Yeah, He's been Connor. tweeting nonstop. There he is for the last three days. All the reasons why he believes that the system is going to collapse. And he, he predicted really he predicted lockdowns like before the lockdowns happened. He's not a dummy. Like he, like I said, he was the CTO of Coinbase. Like he's a, he's a smart guy, and he's been in crypto. He's not just like some nobody. But uh, it's gotten a lot of traction. So I mean, he's he's getting a lot of eyes on it. It's just a big number to 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 be risking. Which I th- I what do you put it at? What do you put? Ninety days, Bitcoin is one million dollars. If on that this- happens, yes, that's great. But I think there we will have a bigger problem. I think we'll it's have terrible. A, yeah, we'll ha- that's what I'm saying. We'll have a bigger problem at hand <laughs> if that happens. You Listen, know? you're not you're not you're not looking at a bigger Bitcoin bull. Like I love Bitcoin. I want Bitcoin to be worth a lot, but not I don't want quick. it to be worth a million dollars in 90 days. Because in order for that to happen, the entire system has to collapse. Which means all the people that we haven't onboarded yet, all the people that you care about and I care about that aren't in Bitcoin, they get annihilated completely wiped out people are going to be devastated we don't want that we don't want that yeah, i put it at four, just just for for the lulls i put it at 0.69 percent <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't think that's uh <laughs> i don't think that's yeah i wouldn't want that to happen really um yeah that's not good it's got us talking about it though and there's a lot of other people talking and it's working about it, so. and it, the yeah. marketing tactic worked and I'm, he's, I'm sure he's worth billions of dollars and that's a uh, drop in the bucket yeah, right i guess so yes, immutable money, infinity, frontier, internal life. Wow, that's crazy. And this is his cover image. Wow. I mean, he's not lying. Could it's, you imagine it's a boop? Just like one day. No, that won't happen. No. So awesome, guys. So we're gonna wrap it up yes. here. Just leave a comment, like, subscribe. We have our free newsletter, completely free. You can unsubscribe whenever you want. Um, no obligations. Um, we just post daily updates on real world events, what's going on in the crypto world, uh, any developments, news, trends. Um, and I think you guys would get a lot of value out of that. We're thinking about dropping, uh, I haven't told you about it, Don, and I was supposed to make this announcement um, last last call. We have one minute here. Let me get this quick. We're going to make, um, I want. we're going to do a free five day course. So it's just basically for the subscribers for the next five days. Um, not next week, I'm going to start it, but it basically just a, fi- a free course for everyone who's been supporting us and subscribe to the channel and uh, to the newsletter. So keep an eye out for that. It'll be back to back one Monday through Friday, um, just free um, value. It's a free course and I hope you guys enjoy. So don't trust verify. Don't trust verify. Thank you guys.